Hello everybody, welcome back to the online course on computer organization and architecture. We are in the input output subsystem. Now, unit 3 is related to DMA transfer. Already we have said that there are three ways to transfer information programmed I O, interpretive and I O, and DMA transfer. Already we have discussed about the other two issues. Now, we are coming to the third mode of transfer, this is your DMA transfer. What is the objective of this particular module DMA transfer? So, objective 1 describe the need of DMA transfer, it will be in the comprehensive level. Objective 2 demonstrate the use of DMA transfer, this will be discussed in the analysis level. Explain the design issues of DMA module, so it will be in the design level. So, we are going to see what are the issues that are that need to be discussed when we are going to design a DMA module direct memory access. So, DMA is direct memory access. So, already you just see that we, what we did in case of your program I O we have problem over here where processor is having busy waiting. So, to overcome these things we have come with the interpretive I O. So, we have eliminated this particular busy waiting and after initiating the transfer now processor can do something else. But here also if you look into the complete transfer process what you will find that in this particular during transfer if you look into it then what will happen if it is coming from I O to processor basically processors are having some registers temporary storage and if we are going to keep more information transfer more information finally, we are going to keep it in the main memory. You just see that when device is ready to transfer information then what will happen? First we are transferring it from devices to the CPU that means, we are bringing it to some processor register and from processor register we are transferring it to memory. So, basically what will happen you just see that if this is my processor CPU and this is my main memory. Okay, main memory and it is connected to system bus and this two system bus so we are connecting to a device. So, say that I am not remembering that I am the device is directly connected. Then in this particular mode of operation what will happen if we want to transfer some information from some device maybe say if you are if you are trying to transfer an in file from your hard disk to your main memory then we are storing this particular information in hard disk and we are going to bring it to the main memory. Just say that a file size of say 1 kilobyte, then what will happen and we are going to bring this particular 1 kilobyte to the memory, because we do not have a storage space inside the processor that 1 kilobyte storage space. We are having hardly few registers may be 8 to 16. So, in this particular way what it is doing? from device first it will come to some register inside the processor may be say register R 1. So, it is coming to the register and from register we are storing it to the memory location. So, during this data transfer operations uh, processor is involved, processor is actively involved during the data transfer. So, when we are going to transfer 1 kilobyte of information then what will happen? We are going to transfer it byte by byte and or maybe say if it is a 16 bit configuration may be 2 byte at a time like that we are going to transfer it and for transferring the entire 1 kilobyte what will happen the processor is involved processor cannot do any other work because it is taking the information from device bringing it to the processor register from processor register we are transferring into the memory. So, processor is grossly involved in transferring the information. So, we should think about that one also where the processor can be freed while doing the data transfer. So, that processor can carry out some other work. So, for that the solution is your DMA direct memory access. So, in case of direct memory access what will happen? The trans data transfer will take place between device and memory. Involvement of processor will be eliminated. So, this is the basic crux about the DMA and why you are coming to DMA. This is the main reason that we want to remove the load of the processor to during the data transfer. So, if we can directly transfer the information from device to memory 
during that time processor may carry out some other work but what are the things processor can carry out we will see that thing also ok. So, this is the basic concept why you are coming for the DMA direct memory access. So, DMA says direct memory access and data transfer takes place between memory and devices the intervention of processor is eliminated. So, this is basically already explained interrupt driven and program I/O records the active CPU intervention that means CPU is always engaged while transferring the information transfer rate is limited and CPU is tied up. So, it cannot do any other work just to eliminate all those things what is the answer DMA is the answer. So, direct memory access we can look for it. So, that the overhead that is getting by the processor can be eliminated if we are going to use DMA. Now, we are going to see what are the issues while we are going to dis, uh, design that DMA, DMA controller direct me memory access and I think after the completion of this course you will be having an idea how DMA works even you will be in a position to design a new DMA controller. So, for that what will happen we are having an additional module in the hardware or we are connecting to the bus it is known as your DMA controller and when we are going to have transport then this DMA controller. So, you just see that we are having I O module that I O module can transfer information. So, DMA controller can also treat it as an I O module only it is an input output module, but it is having a specific functionality. So, in that particular case what will happen now DMA controller going to takes over the data transfer from CPU and it will carry out this that means, it is having some processing tax event that means, you can think about that we are designing another processor dedicated processor which can carry out a specific tax only what specific tax it can do it can do the data transfer between device and processor. So, I think I at some point of time I have mentioned about ASIC application specific integrated circuit. So, DMA may fall in this particular category in this categories of ICs ASIC application specific integrated circuit and what is that application? The basic application that DMA is going to handle is your data transfer between I O devices and memory and how why we require these things because first of all we have to bring the information to the memory and how processor work processor works on von Neumann stored program principle and processor is going to access the information from main memory which is the storage in that particular case. So, see processor works on von Neumann stored program principle. So, when processor is going to execute some a program or going to carry out some tasks it is going to get the information from main memory which is basically storage unit. Now, how we are going to get the information to the storage unit? from input output devices. So, for that now to transfer the information from input devices to the main memory we can say that we are having a device a controller called DMA controller which is an ASIC application specific ICs and the tax performed by DMA controller is transferring information from input devices to the memory uh, on the other hand uh, along with that you can say that transferring information from memory to the output devices because the result we have to give it to the users. So, DMA controller is coming in between and it is going to transfer the information from devices to the memory all right. So, this is the function of a DMA controller and we can view it as an ASIC application specific integrated circuit. Now, the typical DMA module diagram you just see what are the things that we are having. So, these are the issues that whatever is relevant just I am keeping it here, but along with that this addressing techniques and other things are similar to our. I O module because we have to have a status register, we have to give the addresses so that we can identify the devices. All those things are there in DMA controller also, but along with that we are having some specific components. So, what are the specific components? One is your control logic. Okay. So, this is the control logic after getting the info signals from the output environment that means, what is the output environment in that particular case? The output environment is this processor, it is going to get some indication, some signal from the processor. Along with that, it is going to get some information or signals from the devices connected to the 
DMA controller. Okay. So, in the DMA module, those are the signals that it is going to get and depending on those particular signal, this control logic, we need to design this particular control logic to carry out the appropriate tasks and to carry out the complete operation of transferring the information from devices to the memory or from memory to the devices. So, this is the control logic we need to design. So, when we are going to design it, it will be a simple control logic after knowing the all the input signals, all the output signal and that way we know what is the things that it is going to perform. Depending on that, we can design this particular control logic. So, it is a simple control logic. I think by this time, you know how you are going to design the control unit. So, control unit is a part of my processor CPU because CPU is having some registers ALU and control unit. And in this particular subject, in this particular course, we have seen the design issues of this particular control unit to synchronize the operation of the processor. So, with respect to that control unit, this control logic is a very simple one. If you put your time, if you put slight mind what need to be done, you can design this particular control logic also. So, what are the inputs and output to this control logic? One signal is your read or write, you are saying two signals. So, if it is a read, that means you are going to take information from devices to the memory, then it is a read information. If we are going to put information from memory to the output devices, it is write. So, this signal will come from the processor. Okay. It will give indicate processor will say whether it is a read or it is a write. Along with that, we are going to get the other information also from which devices we are going to get it. We are not showing it over here. So, that information also it will be given and accordingly this DMA module is going to work with that particular device. Just said that I am just writing it as a some device is there. So, this device is also connected to the IO module. This portion we have not shown it over here. So, basically it is giving the addresses and status line of this particular devices. So, one is DMA module is getting the information that it is a read information and it is going to read from a particular device that after getting this information, it will pass this things to the device and going to collect the appropriate thing and going to set it up. So, once it will set it up that this device is ready for the data transfer and other things, then what will happen that DMA controller or DMA module will give DMA request to the processor. So, processor is connected over here. Now, once it is giving that DMA request, then it will give DMA acknowledgement, but when it will give DMA acknowledgement, when the processor is ready to perform the DMA transfer. Now, what it is going to do say when it is coming that DMA device is ready and everything is set, it will give the DMA request. In between now processor, what processor is going to do? It is at least we must know what is the volume of the data we are going to transfer. So, it will be in the we are having a data count register just say that for a simple example, I am saying that we are going to transfer say 1000 byte of information. Okay. So, this count will be set to 1000. Okay. So, so that we are going to transfer 1000 byte of information. This is the requirement along with that now processor is going to say that it is going to read it. Now, after get bringing this information where we are going to store it. So, I am having a memory main memory say I am going to store this particular information from starting at the say 7000 onward. Okay. So, what will happen that processor is going to make it ready that address register will be set to this particular 7000. Now, just see what does it means we are going to transfer 1000 bytes of information say it is byte organized and in memory also in we are going to store 1 byte of information and where we are going to store it after bringing it from the devices say from memory location 7000. So, this address register will be set to this 7000. So, this is the address line which is connected to the processor, this is the data line connected to the processor. So, through this data bus, we are setting this data count to the 1000, through this data line, we are setting it to the address register to 7000. Now, everything is set, now device is ready, it will going to give this DMA request. Once processor is ready, then processor will give the DMA acknowledgement. 
Now, what will happen in that particular case? When that DMA acknowledgement is coming over here, at that particular point, that DMA controller is going to take the control of the bus. Now, you just see what will happen. Say, this is my processor CPU, this is the memory. Okay. This is connected to the system bus and say, just I am showing DMA controller is connected to it. Okay. Now, say processor is initiating it, it is saying that after setting this data count and your starting address, now processor is initiating that it wants to perform a read operation. Okay. So, in that particular time that control logic we have designed in appropriate way, now it is going to look for the appropriate devices, because address will also come from this particular devices, from which devices we are going to read it. So, once everything is set, now device is ready, we are at the point of transferring the information, then processor is giving the DMA request. Okay, it is having that getting the DMA request. Now, when DMA request is coming, now processor is going to say that now we can perform the transfer operation, it will give the DMA acknowledgement. Then, when DMA acknowledgement is coming for the DMA, at that particular time, this control of the bus will be given to the DMA. That means, now processor is slightly delinked. Through control signal, we are setting it, and at that particular point, now we are having this particular connection. Now, processor is slightly delinked. Now, processor is not going to use the system bus, system bus will be used by the DMA controller. Now, what it will do? Now, it will take the information from device to the data register. So, this is the DMA module from data register it will going to store into the memory location. Okay. Once one byte of information is transferred that means, you are getting the information from device through data register it is going to the memory location then what will happen? Then data count will be decremented that means, it will become say 999 that means, already we have transfer 1 we need to transfer 999 bytes and this address register will be incremented and it will say that 7001 that means, first byte we have stored in that register uh, memory location 7000, next byte we need to store in 7001. So, like that data count will be decremented after every transfer and address register will be incremented just to point to the next memory location. So, when we transfer the 1000 memory byte that means, when this value will come to 0 that means, we have transfer all the 1000 byte of information. So, after completion of the transfer, now this particular DMA controller will issue this particular interrupt signal to the processor. So, this interrupt signal will say that now transfer is over, it is completed. Now, what it is going to do? Once it get this particular signal, then processor is going to take the control of the system bus. That means, now, system bus will be connected to this particular processor and now this is D link. Now, DMA is not directly connected to the system bus. So, this is the way that DMA is going to transfer information from devices to the memory. So, what is the basic principle over here? Basically, DMA is going to take control of the system bus and in system bus basically it is going to look for the address bus and data bus and DMA is carry out the transfer, when it completes the operation, it will give an indication to the processor, then processor is going to take back the system bus. That means, now DMA controller is no longer connected to the DMA bus, that now processor can work with the main memory through this particular system bus. So, this is the way we are transferring information from devices to the memory through DMA controller and similarly from memory to the devices also we can transfer by following the same principle except that here we are having this particular right signal and uh, data will be transferred from memory to the devices through this particular data register. So, these are the basic components that we have in a DMA module or DMA controller and it works with the help of those control signals. Okay, this is the way that DMA controller works. So, basically now we know how DMA controller is going to work, how it 
transport the information without intervening the processor operation. That means, processor is not involved at a not involved in this particular data transport. So, basically now we what are the DMA operation just see in that particular case CPU tells the DMA controller whether it is read or write. Okay. This is the information that processor will give, it will give that device addresses also from which device it is going to take the information starting address of the memory block of data. So, it will give the starting address of the memory location also, memory block also, where we are going to store the information or from which memory block we are going to transfer information to the output device. Along with that, it will give the amount of data to be transferred. Okay. So, these are the things that I have saying, it is going to give the data count, it is going to give the starting address, where which memory blocks that we are going to use. So, these are the information that CPU is going to tell to the DMA controller. Now, CPU carries out with other works. Now, this now it needs to transfer some information, but now processor is giving that information. That means, it is delegate the job to the DMA controller. Now, processor can carry out its own work. DMA controller will deal with the transfer. DMA controller sends interrupt when finished. Now, deals with the now after getting all those info required information, now DMA controllers will deal with the transfer operation from your device to the memory or memory to the device. Once everything over, then it will send an interrupt to the processor saying that it is finished. Basically, why it is required? Now, at that particular point, we are going to transfer the bus from DMA controller to the processor now, so that processor can fetch information from main memory. So, these are the operations generally we perform when we are going to do a DMA transfer. So, what basically it does now basic info difference over here is that DMA controller takes over the bus. Okay. So, now system bus basically data bus and address bus is used to connect the memory and along with that I O devices also. So, when we are using DMA controller then this control of this particular bus will be taken over by DMA controller. That means, processor is no longer going to use this particular bus while DMA is transferring the information. And so, since DMA is taking over the control of the bus, now DMA is directly going to transfer the information from device to the memory or from memory to the devices. So, it is first going to take over the bus, then it is going to transfer the information. So, in that particular case, it says that it is not an interrupt and we do not have or CPU does not have switch context. Now, this is the difference between your interrupt. In case of interrupt driven I O, what will happen? In case of interrupt driven I O, what we are doing? We are running an interrupt surface routine in the processor itself. That means, there is a context switch. So, basically processor is running a program, it is in one particular context. This context is related to the program that was executed in the processor, but when interrupt comes, when we are going to give service to the interrupted devices, that means, we have to run the appropriate interrupt service routine. So, there is a sense of context in the processor. It is running one program, but it now processor is going to run another program in case of interrupt driven I O. So, for that we have to retain the processor status and how we are doing it? We are just transferring the status of the processor to the system stack and processor is now going to execute the interrupt service routine. So, there is a sense of context from the program being executed in the processor is now suspended. We are storing the context or the relevant information in the system stack and now processor is going to execute the another program which is in the service routine. Once the transfer is over, then processor is going to restore its initial state. That means, again it is coming to the same context. So, this is a context sense. Okay. So, it is going to change its context from one program to the other program, but in case of DMA transfer there is no context sense. Processor is executing one particular program, it will going to execute that particular program or it will return its state, 
because the data transfer op operation has been delegated to the DMA controller. Now, DMA controller is going to take care of transfer this information. So, processor is in the same state, same context. It can execute the same program provided the relevant information is available inside the processor. So, this is the difference you must remember it. So, in case of interrupt driven I O, there is a change of context. In case of DMA transfer, there is no context change. The context of the processor remains same, whatever program it is executing, it is still going to execute that particular program. So, how we are going to do it? So, CPU suspended just before it access the bus. Okay, we will see before an operation operand or data fetch or a data right. We will see these things, I will explain these things. What says that? I am saying that there is no context sense. Okay. So, now I can again draw this thing say this is the processor, this is the main memory and this is a DMA controller. Now, the system bus is given to the DMA controller. Now, processor cannot access the main memory. Okay, this is the situation there is no sense of context that means, processor can carry out its own work. Now, what it says then? Now, CPU suspended just before it access the bus. Now, we are having some information inside the processor. Now, processor is going to carry out this particular information or carry out those particular tasks. So, it is going to execute some instruction, but at some point of time now processor needs some information from memory, but bus is now with this particular DMA controller processor cannot access this particular. So, processor cannot fetch this particular data. Since, processor cannot fetch this particular data, so processor is going to suspend at that particular point. So, processor is going to wait and still till it is going to get the control of this particular bus. So, CPU will be suspended at some point of time. It is not like that processor is going to carry out some work while VMA transfer is going on. Of course, if we are having some relevant information now mo in most of the processor we are having a buffer space in that buffer space again two type of buffers we are having we are having an instruction buffer and we are having a data buffer. So, we have fetched some of the instruction and it is available in the instruction buffer and we have fetched some data and it is available in the data buffer then processor can carry out those particular instruction while DMA transfer is going on. And once this particular data got exhausted, now processor need to get information from the main memory at that time processor is going to get suspended, it will wait till this data transfer is over. So, what are the data transfer mode? There is two way of transferring the information, one is called bus transfer mode and second one is your cycle stealing mode. So, now in case of bus transfer mode, we are going to transfer the entire information in one go. So, in that particular case what will happen? I am saying that I want to transfer 1000 byte and going to transfer it to the memory location 7000. So, in case of bus mode what will happen? When we are going to transfer the information that DMA controller is going to get the access of the bus and it is going to transfer the entire information all the 1000 byte and when it is complete then it is going to give the interrupt signal to the processor. Now, processor can get back the particular system bus and now it can going to access the information. So, in that particular case what will happen? In one go we are going to transfer the entire information. This is known as bus mode. So, what is the problem that we are having bus mode? So, up once processor is going to complete the task that is available inside the processor, now processor is going to wait till this data transfer is complete because now processor want to fetch some more information from the memory. So, processor will be suspended for a longer period of time. So, for that second one is talking about the cycle stealing mode that means, it is going to steal a cycle from the processor it is saying something like. That. So, in that particular case what will happen when processor is going to or say DMA controller is going to get the access of the bus control of the bus it is going to transfer the information after transferring each byte of information say it is a byte transfer. So, each unit of transfer it is temporarily the bus will be given to the processor to do some transfer if some if processor is suspended or waiting to get some information from the memory. So, 
in that particular way in cycle stalling mode intermittently the bus axis will be given to your processor. So, to transfer some information and after that again control will come to the DMA controller. So, that means the axis of the bus will be flipped between your processor and DMA controller during the entire period of transfer. So, in bus mode in one go you are going to transfer everything then control of the bus will be given to the processor, but in case of cycle stealing after every transfer intermittently that control of the bus may be given to the processor to transfer some of the information. If nothing is pending then again bus will come to the DMA controller. So, basically it slows down the CPU, but not as much as CPU doing the transfer, because if CPU is doing the transfer it is totally slowed down it cannot do any other work, but here it will be slowed down in case of DMA transfer, because in some point of time processor is going to wait for the bus. So, this is the DMA and inter breakpoint you can say. So, what is the inter breakpoint basically when this breakpoint basically what we are saying that when the processor is going to suspend its current program execution. So, if interrupt is coming, so currently it is executing one particular instruction, then what will happen? It is going to complete this instruction and at that time after completion of the instruction, it will check whether any interrupt is pending or not. Then if interrupt is pending, then it is going to process this particular interrupt. So, this is the interrupt process cycle. So, this is the only breakpoint. it will execute the complete instruction and then it will check for the interrupt. But in case of that means, this breakpoint basically what I am saying this is a suspension or suspending the execution of the current program, but in case of, of DMA it may suspend at a different point said already I talked about that instruction buffer. We have some instruction in the instruction buffer once it completes all those particular instruction then processor need to fetch a new instruction. So, if case of DMA transport since system bus is given to the DMA controller. So, processor cannot now going to get this bus. So, processor will wait over here, but once we are having an instruction at least processor can do the fetch the instruction that means, it is there it can decode the instruction. After decoding the instruction if we have to fetch some more operand again now processor will be suspended processor will wait at that particular point because now bus is with DMA controller. So, again say data is with me operand is with me then it can execute the instruction. After execution of instruction say if we want to store the result then again processor will suspend it over here wait over here. So, in that particular case see processor may suspend at several points. So, these are basically talk we say about DMA breakpoint, but in case of interrupt there is only one interrupt breakpoint where the execution of the current program will be suspended. Now, in this particular case now you just see if we are using the bus mode of transport then what will happen? The processor will wait either of these four points till the completion of the data transfer. But if we are using that cycle stealing mode then what will happen at some point of time processor is going to get a control of the bus at least it can fetch some of the information again it can carry out. So, this DMA breakpoint may be reduced if we go for cycle stealing mode, but it will take more time to completion of the data transfer because in between the bus has given to the processor. So, these are the two ways you can transfer it and these are the issues related to DMA transfer. So, in case of DMA transfer we are directly transferring the information from devices to the memory or memory to the devices and processor is freed from transferring the information. So, processor can carry out some other operation if all the information related to that operation is available inside the processor. If processor need to access something from the memory then processor is going to wait at that particular point and we said these are the DMA breakpoint. Now, how we are going to connect those particular DMA controller? So, these are simple. So, this is a single bus detach DMA controller. So, in that particular user see this is the processor, processor is directly connected to the memory through this particular system bus. So, now processor can transfer information from memory. So, when I am going to transfer I O devices that I O devices will also may be directly connected to the bus along with that we are having a DMA controller which is also connected to the bus. So, we are having a 
single bus and everything is connected to these things. When we are going to perform I O transfer, maybe I O to D M A, then D M A to memory. So, we are having two type of transfer. First, we are going to have I O to D M A. Okay. At that time, say processor is dealing from the memory. And once we are coming to the DMA, then what will happen from DMA to memory? This is the second. So, each transfer uses bus twice. One for one transfer from I/O devices to the DMA, we are using the bus. During that time, processor cannot access information from memory. So, once you collect the information in your DMA controller, then again DMA is going to take the control of the bus and going to transfer the information from DMA to the memory. So, it is going to get the bus twice that means, CPU is suspended twice for one single transfer. So, this is one way of connecting DMA and I O devices to the processor. So, another configuration is your here I O devices is not directly connected to the bus, I O devices are connected through DMA module. So, this is the same thing. So, this is processor is connected to the main memory through this particular system bus and that DMA controllers are connected to the system bus. Now, all the I O devices are connected through the DMA controller. So, in one DMA controller we may use more I O devices also. So, this is in this particular DMA controller, we are using only one I O devices. In this particular DMA controller, we are connecting two I O devices. So, in that particular case, you just see that during the transfer, bus will be suspended only once. Because when we are processor is initiating a DMA transfer, it will give the information to DMA. Now, DMA controller is going to collect the information from devices, okay, if it is an input, and once everything is ready then DMA is going to give a request to the processor and at that time processor is going to release the bus to the DMA controller and DMA controller is going to transfer the information to the memory. So, in this particular case your bus will be suspended only once or CPU is suspended only once because bus the control of the bus is given to DMA controller. So, this is another configuration. So, again it is a two bus system, one is your I O bus and second one is system bus. That means, through system bus we are connecting to the memory to the processor. We are using a separate bus called I O bus and that I O bus that all the I O devices are connected to the I O bus and that I O bus is connected to the DMA controller. So, you just see while again transfer of the information the system bus will be used only once. So, CPU will be suspended only one. So, this is another configuration that we are having. So, we can use these three different configuration while kind of going to connect DMA controller. One is when system bus and whole devices are also connected to the system bus. In that particular case, so CPU will be suspended twice. Second case, we are having one system bus, but I O devices are connected to the DMA module and DMA is connected to the system bus. So, system bus will be or say processor will be suspended only once and here we are using two bus one is your system bus and one is your I O bus and say DMA controller is the interface between your system bus and I O bus. So, during the transfer CPU will be suspended only once. So, like that when we talked about discuss about the interrupt driven I O for every processor we are having an interrupt controller. So, like that for every processor or every familiar processor we are having a DMA controller. When we talk about 8086 families, so that means 8086 processor or 8086 processor or 286 processor for that particular families, Intel families, we are having a DMA controller. The number of DMA controller is 8237A. This is a DMA controller. So, when DMA module needs buses, it sends whole signal to the processor. So, these are several signals that we are having and CPU responded by whole acknowledgement signal. So, basically say one is we talk about DMA request and DMA acknowledgement when we talk about this basic structure of the DMA say DMA request and DMA acknowledgement. Okay. So, now for different industries or different companies use their own proprietary signals and they gave some name to it, but they are similar to that DMA request and DMA acknowledgement. So, in this particular 
BMA controller we are having one signal called hole which is nothing but similar to your BMA request and one is your HLDA hole acknowledgement this is basically nothing but BMA acknowledgement. Okay. So, once that hole acknowledgement is received by this DA controller then BMA module can use the buses that means, bus control of the bus will come to the DMA controller and that memory will be directly will be directly connected to the DMA controller. So, how it works? So, for example, data transfer from memory to DIX, DIX means here we are talking about the hard disk because you know that in your machines you are having a hard disk of capacity say 500 GB or like that. So, now device request service of the DMA by pulling DMA request. Okay, now, DMA request is between device and DMA controller. DMA puts high on HRQ hold request. So, it is getting a request. Now, DMA puts is hold, it says that okay, it has received. Now, CPU finishes the present bus cycle, not necessarily present instruction, and puts high on hold acknowledgement. Okay. So, you just see it is getting a hold signal, a hold request. Now, processor is going to suspend it operation and it is going to that hold request. Now, after getting the hold acknowledgement, now DMA activate the DMA acknowledgement because DMA is coming from the processor telling the device to start the transfer. DMA start transfer by pulling the address of the first byte of address bus and activate the memory read it then activate low I O W to write the peripherals. Okay. So, basically now this is basically if it is a memory transfer or I O write. So, basically it is going to work in that particular form and DMA deactivate the HRQ giving bus back to the CPU. So, here we are getting hold request that means DMA puts I on in that means now DMA going to work with the bus once it pull it down hold request then now, bus can be used by the processor. So, this is the way we are going to configure the system that bus will be directly connected to the devices. So, this is the scenario you can see something like that. So, this is the DMA controller initially what will happen just you think that processor is directly connected to the main memory with this particular bus. Okay. This is the address bus, this is the data bus. So, processor is working with this particular memory, but when this situation is coming then when DMA gives this whole request basically it is coming from this uh, DMA request coming from the controller then the TIX controller then it will give DMA acknowledgement means it can work with that before giving it it will give the whole request. So, when it is giving the whole request now processor is going to release the bus it will give the whole acknowledgement. When it is coming the whole acknowledgement, now this bus is connected to this particular controller and this is the control bus. Now, you just see when we are connecting in this particular way, now processor is independent. It is not connected to any of the devices through system bus. Now, through this particular DMA controller, now it is going to access the address bus and data bus. Now, where from it is going to get the address because already in DMA controller we are having an address register, we are having a data register. Now, DIX controller is going to get the information from DIX and it is going to transfer it to the main memory. Once transfer is completed, then what will happen? Bus will be given back to the processor. This is the way we are going to re reconfigure the whole system that DMA controller is going to get access of the bus and going to carry out the transfer without interfering this particular processor. And if some information is already available inside the processor, then processor can carry out those particular instruction or process those particular information. Okay, so, this is the way we are going to transfer information with the help of DMA controller. Now, see some test item. Question 1. Here I am saying that explain the major issues with program I O and interrupt I O. This is meeting the objective one. Already I have said that in one case program I O we are having the busy waiting. In case of interrupt I O what we have? We have the intervention or processor is involved during the transfer. So, both has been eliminated in case of DMA. Explain the technique of data transfer using DMA I O techniques. 
already I have discussed about the basic structure of the DMA module. So, with respect to that I think you can say how we are transferring the information using DMA technique. What are the different components of a typical DMA controller? So, this is the design issue. So, when we are going to so, basically meeting the objective 3. So, we have to see what are the components that we have to put in a DMA controller. At least you see that data count is required, data register is required to transfer the data and we need the address register also to specify the address of the memory location that we are going to use. Okay. So, we have discussed those things. Now, test item 4, one need to transfer a file size of 5 MB to main memory. If you work with a processor of 16 bits, how many times the processor will be interrupted for the transfer of this particular file? Say, so, I am talking about a 5 MB and we are talking about the processor of 16 bit. Okay. That means, you just consider that everything is of 16 bit, that means, processor registers are of 16 bit, my data bus is 16 bit, maybe address bus may be 16 bit. So, in that particular case, what will happen? The data count will be your maximum 16 bit. That means, this is your 2 to the power 16, which is equal to your 65000 something or we can say this is your 64 k memory location. That means, you can set the data count to 64 k only, but we need to transfer 5 MB of information. That means, in one go you can transfer 64 k only, because my data count can go up to 64 k it is your 2 3 or 16. So, first you set it to 64 k. Similarly, in the address memory also you start the starting address. So, once you transfer the 64 k, then next time you have to again transfer 64 k. So, in one go I can transfer 64 k only and after every transfer we have to set the data count because it will be reset to 0, you have to set the new address like that. So, basically this question is like that if I want to transfer 5 MB from hard disk to your main memory. So, how many times the processor will be interrupted? Because in one go you can go for 64 k only. Now, you can calculate it. I think it is now very simple. Once I give you the hints, now you can find it out and it will you will get that how many times that processor will be interrupted. Just think that we are using the brush mode of transfer how the DMA transport. So, in question 5, how the DMA transport defined for interrupt driven transport. Okay, already I have mentioned it, the basic difference is your context switching. In interrupt driven, it is there is a change of context. So, it is context switching, but in DMA transport, it is not context switching. Second one, in case of interrupt driven, during data transfer processor is involved, but in case of DMA processor is not involved. Like that you can see that what are the differences that we may have. Okay, with this I come to end of this particular unit. I wish that you have got an idea or issues related to DMA transfer and I think you are in a position to design a DMA controller to transfer information from input output devices to main memory. Thank you all.